We are in the BI Platform Studio and I'm speaking with uh, Keith McCormick, Data Science Consultant. Um, Keith, you did a session on driving measurable value in established industries with machine learning, with traditional machine learning. We're following up on that a bit and we'll be covering deep learning, we'll be covering trust, we'll be speaking about prioritizing use cases, um, bottlenecks and lessons learned. Um, starting with deep learning, can you give some can you briefly give some real world examples where the application of deep learning has had a big impact? Absolutely. You know, um, deep learning has been revolutionizing machine learning in ways that I think people can see uh, in their everyday lives. Um, really, the areas are pretty easy to define because it's not a huge number of areas, but the use cases within those um, uh, areas are quite considerable. So we're talking about smart devices in the home, things that are on the horizon like drone delivery and autonomous vehicles. So again, to take the autonomous vehicles, we don't typically see cars driving around without humans yet. You occasionally see that in a place like uh, San Francisco or Silicon Valley, but we know about driver assist and how that's changing things. And there actually are experiments for things like drone delivery, uh, you know, in some markets. In fact, during the pandemic, apparently, it was quite common in China to get takeout food delivered by robot uh, locally. Uh, and that was because to, uh, you wanted to reduce the, uh, the interaction between yeah. the recipient and the, uh, and the delivery person. So these are, the, these are really the areas. It's the natural language processing, computer vision, and increasingly video-related things like the flight path of a drone. And what are situations wherein deep learning would not be a good method to solve a classification problem? Well, you know, it's, uh, there, there's some discussion, debate, uh, controversy around this, but one could possibly start this conversation by saying, if it's not one of those things that I just mentioned, if it's not natural language processing, you know, computer vision or video, it's less clear um, how... Uh, deep learning may or may not be an improvement over existing techniques. And the reason is, in so many areas, you need transparency. Think about setting insurance rates. Why was my request for a refinance at a lower rate denied, et cetera? These kinds of things, you need that transparency because there's regulation or other reasons why you and the customer want to be clear on why a certain business decision was made. So in insurance, banking, manufacturing, it's not that there's no deep learning applications, but you have to be more cautious because you need that transparency. Okay. And a bit in the same, in the same area, um, deep learning concepts might be too complex to understand for most business users. So how do we gain their trust in the application of it? Well, um, there's ways to overcome the transparency uh, problem. In fact, it's a real hot area in machine learning now. So let's take an area that I just listed as one where you should be cautious, let's say banking. Well, um, there are techniques uh, called explainable AI where you can generate reason codes. So even though the modeling technique that was used was a so-called black box technique and deep learning falls into that category, you can use this layer of explanation using your machine learning uh, technology as well to generate reason codes. So that person knows exactly why the deep learning model made the decision that they did about a loan or a refinance or interest rate or something like that. Okay. And what would be your advice to organizations that are looking into prioritizing their first machine learning use cases? How do they, um, how do you identify the best candidates to start with? Well, if we're talking about um, a new team and so many organizations are in that situation, uh, one thing that can be uh, interesting about the career path of the data scientist is that many of us at some point in our career had an experience being the only person like us in an organization. So if you're, if you're describing that kind of situation, I urge both at the team level and the organizational level to start with transparent models first. And I, and I really make that advice for two major reasons. One is you probably wanna start with a use case that involves transparency first to develop that kind of trust you were just asking me about. And the other reason is, even if you're contemplating using a complex model, 
you want to try a transparent model first, or to put that another way, the kinds of algorithms that generate transparent models first to be um, your pace car. That's the metaphor that I like to use. Find out how good a job you can do with that before you can consider something more complex so that if you do opt for the more complex, you know the trade-offs involved, just how much benefit did you get with the greater accuracy perhaps, but what did you sacrifice along the way? You want to be able to compare those two choices because the choice is really a business decision, not solely a technolo uh, technology decision. Okay. And finally, um, what, what do you think will limit the progress and advancements in machine learning and AI in a business environment? Uh, what are the main bottlenecks and also how can, how can you overcome those? Well, uh, one way one way to put it, uh, uh, frankly, is that um, uh, if you choose not to, uh, to to follow the path that I outlined just now, uh, you can sometimes get yourself into trouble. So, if if instead of choosing um, a transparent model that has clear problem definition as a first project, you can take on something that's too complicated. Folks within the organization aren't clear on what you're trying to do. And I find in particular where organizational resistance often resides is in the end users of that model. So that could be sales reps. It could be um, nurses on the hospital floor. It could be the individuals that maintain the, um, the trucks or rail cars in your system, uh, you know, your transportation system or something like that. If they're not clear on why the model is making a particular re um, uh, recommendation, they're gonna make that known. So the way that you overcome this is to create a culture of, um, that embraces this and where everyone understands how they're impacted and how the model is making its decisions. And if you concentrate on that, you'll do well. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for the interview, Keith.